ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه واله وصحبه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد The religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to practice etiquettes and characteristics that are praiseworthy in nature, that joins the communities together, and that allows the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be magnificent in their characteristics, perfect in their etiquettes, and noble in their manners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages the slaves of Allah jalla wa ala to hold together, to hold together the rope of mercy, understanding that each and every single believer, our brothers and sisters in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of you hold together the rope of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا and make sure that you do not dispute and differ make sure that you do not go your own ways and you betray each other make sure you're together because as he says subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً for the believers are brothers and sisters the believers form a brotherhood and a sisterhood. And whilst there are many different levels and many different stages and categories of what and how Allah Jalla wa ala allows and commands us to join the ties of the believers and to ensure we have this network of brotherhood and sisterhood, there is no doubt that the greatest of them, the pinnacle of them, is to ensure that the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in joining the ties, the ties of kinship. They in joining the ties, the ties of their blood. They are made aware of who is from their lineage. And they are told to hold and uphold the rights that Allah Jalla wa ala has given the slaves of Allah pertaining to his family, pertaining to his blood, pertaining to his lineage. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَهُ وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَصِلْ رَحِمَهُ وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَخُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْمُدْ He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith reported in Bukhari, emphasizing the importance of joining the ties of kinship, of knowing about your lineage and your blood and ensuring you uphold Every single right of this, he says, "Man kana yu'minu billah wal yawm al-akhir." Whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa taala and in the last day, then let him honor his guests. "Man kana yu'min billah wal yawm al-akhir." And whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa taala and in the last day, <coughs> let him uphold the ties of kinship. Let him join the ties of his blood. Let him uphold the ties of his lineage. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا Whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the last day, let him speak good or let him remain silent. <coughs> in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us a framework and a possible understanding of a hadith. And that is the perfection, perfection in your belief in Allah 
and perfection in your belief of the Akhirah is that you uphold the ties of kinship, which therefore means that if one was to destroy and betray the ties of kinship, if one was to cut the ties of kinship, if one was to betray and dishonor his family, his father, his mother, his children, his blood, that in reality he has disobeyed Allah, and not just disobeyed Allah, but there is a deficiency in his belief in Allah, and a deficiency in his belief in the Day of Judgment. Hence he said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Whoever believes in Allah, and whoever believes in the last day, let him uphold the ties of kinship. Let him uphold the ties of his blood. Let him uphold the ties of his lineage. And thus, O brothers, O sisters in Islam, we must know the Surah Al-Arham, that connecting, that upholding the ties of kinship is a matter for which the deen of Allah Jalla wa'ala holds an extremely, extremely high regard. Here, Ihsan ila al-Aqrabin min dhawi al-Nasab wal-Ashab wal-Atf alayhim wal-Rifq bihim wal-Ri'aya li ahwalihim. It is, as the scholars of Islam define, it is to uphold the ties of kinship, to show generosity and gentleness, to take care and look after, to say good words and nice etiquette and manners against or for every person that is close to you in your blood. And what is the definition of people that is close to you in your blood? The scholars of Islam, they say your father and your mother, your brothers and your sisters, your children, your sons and your daughters, your grandparents, your grandfathers and your grandmothers, paternal and maternal, your grandchildren, and then your paternal and your maternal uncles and their children. All of them consist, all of them are from the people to whom Allah Jalla wa'ala requests, urges, commands for the slaves of Allah Jalla wa'ala to uphold a particular etiquette with, to show great and noble manners with, to be gentle towards, to show love and affection, to be people who make dua for them regularly. It is a part of Iman, and not just a part of Iman, it is the pinnacle of Iman, to which for, a, which for which for a person if he was to neglect it, there is a deficiency in his faith in Allah and a deficiency in his faith in the Akhirah. It's a means, O oh brothers or oh sisters in Islam, to obtain blessings in this dunya, blessings in your wealth, and blessings in your life, to the extent the scholars of Islam, they say, if you want to prolong your life, but prolong your life in worship. And if you want to find that Allah Jalla wa has given you many blessings in your wealth, in your sustenance. Perhaps you don't have a great job, but every single wealth that you have, Allah Jalla wa multiplies it. You are able to find blessings in your wealth, blessings in your family, blessings in your life. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, in a hadith reported in Bukhari, from Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala an, say, man sarrahu an yubsit lahu fi rizqihi, wa an yunsat lahu fi atharihi, fal yasil rahimahu. Whoever, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, desires an expansion in his sustenance and desires an expansion in his age. And the scholars add that, what, what does it mean by an expansion? An expansion in goodness, an expansion in barakah, an expansion literally, an expansion filled with obedience, an expansion filled with finding Allah Jalla wa ala's love and pleasure. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever wants to find it, whoever desires it, an expansion in his life and an expansion in his sustenance, then let him have good relations with his blood. Let him have good relations with his blood, with his brothers and his sisters, with his parents and his children, with his paternal and maternal grandparents and uncles and their children, his cousins, everyone from his blood. Let him have good relations with them all. No brothers or sisters in Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded us for this very reason to learn, to study our lineage, to ask your parents and your grandparents about who, who is related to you, who shares the same blood as you, so that you can find barakah in your life, and so that you can find barakah in your sustenance. The ulama of Islam as Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala and narrates on the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, learn, learn, learn enough, learn about your lineage, which will facilitate you to keep ties with them, learn about them, 
for indeed keeping ties of kinship encourages Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase your sustenance and to increase your age. To increase your sustenance and to increase your age. That's the ulama of Islam. They will study speech. They will study Quran. They will study the deen of Allah. And they will study what? They will study their lineage. Who is from their blood? Who shares the same blood as them? So that they can find barakah, barakah, blessings upon blessings in being good and affectionate towards them. Our brothers or sisters in Islam, enjoying the times of kinship, showing love and affection to your family members, and even to your outside family members, is a means for a person to enter into paradise. The Prophet ﷺ, in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, was traveling with his companions, radiyallahu anhu majma'in. Faja'a a'rabi, an a'rabi a Bedouin man, he came to the Prophet ﷺ. And he stopped the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he held on to the held on to the string or the rope around the neck of the camel. And he said to him, "Ya Rasulullah, tell me about an action that will allow me to enter into paradise, and tell me about an action that will keep me far away from the hellfire. Tell me about an action that will enter me into paradise, and tell me about an action." That will keep me far away from the hellfire. The Prophet ﷺ shocked about the etiquette of this man stopping him ﷺ as he was traveling. He looked towards his Sahaba. Then he asked the man once more, repeat your request, repeat your question. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, tell me about an action that will enter me into paradise. And tell me about an action that will keep me far away, far away from the fire. To which the Prophet ﷺ replied to him. And he said to him, O oh, Bedouin man, a deed that can draw you close to paradise and keep you far away from the hellfire is to worship Allah and not associate partners with Him, to establish the prayer and to give zakah and to show kindness towards your blood, to show kindness towards kith and kin. To show kindness towards your lineage, to show kindness towards your uncles, to show kindness towards your cousins, kindness towards your blood. It's a means to enter Jannah, and it's also a means for a person to be thrown away, thrown away from Jannah, and enter into the hellfire. It's a means to obtain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a hadith reported by Abu Huraira, when he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah ta'ala, خلق الخلق when Allah Jalla wa'ala created the creation الرحم the womb the womb it talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said to him Ya Rabbi Ya Rabbi what would you do to the person that will cut me off what would you do to the person that oppresses me what would you do to the person that doesn't help, doesn't uphold the ties or the rights that you've given me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds in a hadith reported in Ahmed. In his variation, he says, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah jalla wa says, I will cut off every person that cuts you off. I will cut off every person that cuts you off. And I will not show mercy towards any person that does not show mercy towards you. That's the one who does not show mercy, does not show love and affection towards his family, towards his blood. Let him know that the mercy of Allah jalla wa ala will slowly begin to cut off. Will slowly begin to cut off from this person as well. In fact, not only the mercy is cut off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah jalla wa ala promises from the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he will bring forward the punishment of al-akhirah in the dunya. In a hadith reported in Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no sin except for which the punishment is brought forward. In this dunya, before the akhirah, except for the one that oppresses and the one that cuts the ties of kinship. He says, وسلم, there is a sin for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings forward, brings forward the punishment in the dunya for the person. Before the akhirah, and this punishment is reserved for those who oppress and those that cut the ties of kinship. 
حديث ببوذي الترمذي and they can authentic by Sheikh Al-Labani Rahimahullah Ta'ala That's what brothers or sisters in Islam and the scholars of Islam mention If you want to look to find the people that Allah Jalla Wa'ala has set and decreed and legislated punishment after punishment upon them Their children are far away from the deen Perhaps they engage in haram and they themselves are engaging in haram or they're finding them some kind of arrogance or pride or they're far away from the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and they are punished, they have calamities, and they have sufferings, and they have forms of destruction on this earth. Let them know, let the people know. A reason behind this is that this person has cut the ties of kinship. This person has cut the ties of kinship. <coughs> not only had he cut the ties of kinship, <coughs> not only is his punishment in the dunya, but he will find another punishment in the akhirah. And that punishment in the Akhirah is that Jannah will be made haram for him. And his action will be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, There are thalathatun, la yadkhulun al-jannah. There are three groups of people that will never enter Jannah. The Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, who are from these groups of people? And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who gives alcohol to others. The one that believes in sihar. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Waqati' Waqati' al Rahim. And the one that cuts the ties of kinship. The one that cuts the ties of kinship. Not only will he be punished in this dunya, but he will find that Jannah will be made haram for him. Jannah will be made haram for him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who can fulfill the rights of our kith and kin. We ask him Jalla wa'ala to make us of those who understand the rights of our blood and implement it to the most perfect way. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimin fa astaghfiru inna Allah ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala, wa ba'd. The scholars of Islam, they discuss many different ways in which a person can tie the relation between kith and kin, and the tie, the relation between his blood and his lineage, and what constitutes, what constitutes as somebody that cuts off the ties of kinship. And they say from the person, from the person that upholds the ties of kinship is the one that does not boycott his blood. So the lowest level of tying, tying the relationship between blood is the one that says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That is the lowest level, the lowest level for a person that is considered to be in the Sharif of Allah as one that's not, one that has not cut off the ties of kinship. In fact, the scholars of Islam speak further. And they say, whilst this person is not considered to be the one that cuts the ties of kinship, there is no doubt that Islam encourages. And Islam calls towards perfecting these etiquettes such that the one is truly somebody that upholds the ties of kinship. And this can be done, they suggest and they recommend to visit them regularly, to provide gifts for them, to make dua for them, to protect them from the trials and tribulations of this dunya and the trials and the tribulations of the akhirah. However, the scholars of Islam, they say, for there are many groups of people that have blood, that have family, that do not speak to them whilst they try their utmost. They, the family, has boycotted them. The family has turned over a sheet of leaf, a sheet of, a sheet of pay, a pay, a page of paper, and they have made them such that they are an anomaly inside the entire family. And normally in the generation, somebody they choose to oppress and choose to have dhulm upon. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to him, Ya Rasulullah. He said to him, Ya Rasulullah. I have, he says, relatives with whom I try my best. I have with them a close relationship. But they, every time I come close to them, they severe it. Every time I try to treat them well, they treat me in a very ill way. I try my utmost to be sweet to them, 
But they are harsh towards me, your Prophet of Allah. What can I do? He says to them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What can I do to him? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If it is how you say it is, if it is how you say it is, that you try your utmost to fulfill this ties, and you try your utmost to be gentle, and you try your utmost to be sweet, and show love and affection, but they are the ones that continue to break, and they are the ones that continue to cut, and they are the ones that have pushed you aside. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith in Sahih Muslim, if it is how it is, how you say it is, then know that you are throwing fire on their faces. You are throwing fire on their faces, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that you'll be dominant over them. You'll be dominant over them in this dunya and in the akhirah. So long as though you adhere to this. The scholars of Islam, they say, what does this hadith mean? And they say from the meanings of this hadith, our brothers or sisters in Islam, is that the one that tries to uphold the ties of kinship, the one that calls his brothers, his sisters, his uncles, his aunties to gatherings, and they reject the one who sends them messages, but they don't reply. The one that offers them salam, but they don't respond. The one that is trying. What does it mean that he's throwing, he's throwing ashes of fire on their faces? He will be a hujjah against them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. He will be an argument against them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And it is this reason that they've, that they're currently doing, this cutting of relationship that they have chosen will be a means for them to find the fire in the hellfire. Moreover, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Jalla wa will make him dominant over them. In some narrations, Allah Jalla wa will decree angels to descend to make him dominant over them, protecting him in all circumstances. And the scholars of Islam, they say what this means, is that everyone who tries to uphold the ties of kinship, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will protect him and his family and his generation from any trial and tribulation. Protecting them, making sure they're dominant over them, dominant over them in the dunya, and dominant over them in the akhirah. The one who holds the ties of kinship, as we said before, will find barakah in the dunya, will find jannah in the akhirah, will find all types of goodness in this world, mercy, love and affection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will give him angels to make him dominant over them. In this dunya and in the akhirah. In this dunya and in the akhirah. That's our brothers or sisters in Islam. We have paternal uncles or maternal uncles. We have cousins. We have family members. We have blood that is still alive. Even if they be disbelievers. Join the ties of kinship with them. And if, you may be dis- if they may be disbelievers. Join the ties of kinship with them by showing them love and affection. By making dua for their guidance. By giving them gifts. On the events of celebration in Islam and beyond, show them love and affection of Islam. Show them the characteristics of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And show them that Islam holds high. Holds high the regard and the etiquette of joining the ties of kinship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who fully, completely, precisely uphold the ties of kinship. Allahumma a'iz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma a'zil al-Shirk wa al-Mushrikeen. اللهم إنك أفو أن تحب الأف فأف عنا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قوموا